And so this is a typical walkthrough that might happen on a job. So anytime you get ready to start doing a particular design portion of the job, you do what's called a coordination meeting and a walkthrough. And the purpose of that is just to give you this good idea about what mm -hmm. the building is like. And so we're going to do that. We're going to walk through this building. You've kind of read the background. You know that uh, um, a sort of a environmental services company is planning to move in and they want the build out done for them. And this would be a sample of um, the, the designer has created the build out that they think uh, will meet the needs of the, of the company and now they want to show it to them. Mm -hmm. And then the, the detailed design will start working. So we'll, we'll ha and we'll have some questions about that. So here we are in the building and you can see I can look around and this is the entryway to the building. Okay, if I go out, if I go out the main doors, I can see that this is, this is a kind of big H-shaped building and uh, there's a big empty part over here. Okay, that would get its own build out. And then there's, um, there's this central reception area that can be shared between everybody. Okay, and there's a little place to wait. And there's, two, uh, there's a little conference room and a little office room. So that's a, a lobby or reception area that is shared between the occupants of the building. Um, so now, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then if we come in over here, we'll see that, okay, I got it. Here's a little desk area. So if somebody comes in and needs it, they can use it, uh, either a guest or somebody who's working it. And here's a little bit more semi-private conference area, but you'll notice that there's no ceiling. And that's <laughs> important to notice because that means that the heating and air conditioning will just be kind of shared between this whole room. Right. Okay? Oh, so they're not... They're not... Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. They're like, not cubicles, but not... Co okay. Like Correct. They're, okay. they're a little bit better than a cubicle mm -hmm. because they're more than four feet high. <laughs> yeah. But they're not <laughs> really... Seat, yeah. yeah. They're not really a full office, which right. means that my air conditioning in this whole area can will really flow well right? You know, right, yeah. Um, and so that'll be good. So now um, let's go look at the next area. So that's the lobby area. And, and we're just going to do a quick run through and then we're going to do a little bit more detail. So I can see that over here, there's a bunch of spaces that are just kind of like, you know, and these are a little bit small, but you know, for a very first um, run through, it gives me an idea. And these ones do. These have a, a drop ceiling of some sort. Mm -hmm. So these are semi-private. These have a drop ceiling. And each of these are going to need some sort of an HVAC. Right? Um, yeah, so they're all, they're all little rooms. Look, this one even has a little area for something. And they've yeah, we all did, been... Uh, we just did the MEP thing in, uh, what, three... 328, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't it amazing yeah. how we coordinate? Yeah, right? and I'm like, oh, look, I've seen this before. Oh, I've, seen, I've done this project before. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and, but now it's going to be just a little bit different. But, yeah. Um, uh, but so you get you get it, right? You know where yeah. this is. You know that there's a bathroom and there's some things. And they're going to have a purpose. And this build-out, you know, uh, we'll be able to go back to the architect, say, nah, it's a little too cramped. Uh, maybe knock down a wall, do this, do that. But the air conditioning and the electrical and the plumbing are going to be pretty well set. So we've got this area that is for something. And this one, I think the person has a window. Yay. But look, even the drop ceiling is below the window. That uh -huh. actually happens quite frequently, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and maybe they want to change the ceiling to 10 foot or whatever. Those are part of the details. We're just going to be doing a rough walkthrough. 
And then here's the manufacturing area, right? Okay. And so over here you see there's a mill, there's a, a probably a parts washer, um, some storage, a lathe, another mill, a grinder, there's an air source, some lights, some storage. So, so this is a small manufacturing area that's probably more useful for assembly and some minor modification. But you can see how you could build all of the things that we've talked about here, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, so this is the light manufacturing area and repair. This is sort of a storage and staging area. You know, they're, they're going to have equipment and they're going to need to pack it up, put it in a truck, go out to a site, take measurements, bring the samples back in. So this is sort of a staging and shipping area where they can keep their stores. This is the actual service area where they can test their equipment, get, get things packed and set up and ready to go. And if they are uh, building new equipment, either for sales or lease or service, they have a place to test it. This is, a, this is water, okay? So there's a, there's a test pool. Um, obviously, you need to be able to fill this and things like that. But you can see what the basic areas are, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so that's... That's the first step of a walkthrough. You get familiar with it. Now, it's nice to be familiar with it. Oh, and then this is the actual uh, sample processing. This is a, a fume hood so that if you're doing any kind of chemistry, acid-base reactors, mm -hmm. and that's uh, chemical oxygen demand, biological oxygen demand, uh, some spectrophotometry, uh, any biological work, you get to do it in a hood. There's some gas cylinders. Uh, that's probably supposed to be an autoclave, but not on the ground. It should be up. Kind of takes you back to like high school chemistry classroom. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> so, so, and and now I, like, did, I think I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, and I did this. This was my mm -hmm. job in college. Mm -hmm. I was a lab grunt for a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, a professor that was doing studies. And this is what I did, man, day in, day out. The only thing missing here is the Mettler scale that I was on for about 15 to 20 hours a week weighing things, right? <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, this is a basic small little chemistry area. And, you know, it's just here for us to be able to hook up some water and hook up some water and, you know, hook up some electrical and some air and things, right? Uh, a little bit of hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. So that's like, and, and now you could get all of that information from a drawing. You, you've you already seen that there's a, a semi-space plan pretty well set out for this thing, and you could identify all this, but it's really good to get your ideas set, right? So now, Let's go through the next part of a walkthrough, and that's what do you need to know? Okay, so let's talk about the lobby first. And then we'll go and answer those questions. So you need to know something for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. So let's make it sort of um, really kind of um, um, systematic. So let's look at the... HVAC. What would you need to know in order to set up your HVAC properly? Uh, that some of the walls are not <clears throat> uh, full height and some are. So you yeah, so that would be a big enough system or so, something so, for that bigger space where right. those aren't full height walls, but then you need to put vents into the individual rooms where they do go. Right. Ceiling and, height. And so we need to know about circulation patterns. And one of the things that we saw were the um, uh, the, the rooms are uh, open at the ceiling. So there's something that you could that you could put down, right? 
So you don't need specific CFM to those little areas. They can just be part of the open air, so long as you can circulate in there. But you would need to know what the wall height is. Hi there. Sorry, I'm gonna just mute so that okay. she's not in the recording. Okay, no problem though. That's uh, always love, so, so like when I ran my judo class, um, that was the first thing we, we always said, okay, you, everybody on the mat is responsible to miss the little kids that dart out onto the mat. So um, there was always this extra heightened awareness of where kids were and stuff like that. It was really fun. She really loves video calls and things, but you know, she's a pandemic baby toddler. Yeah. So yeah. this is very interesting to her. Oh, look, someone's on the screen. <laughs> so isn't this cool stuff? Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> so so we, we want to know those things um, and and we can get those off the drawings, right? But but we, we it's something for us to go look at, okay? What else do you need to know in order to do the HVAC? Do you know? Did you, and, and maybe you've done this and maybe you haven't. You know, you need to know the, the people per square foot or how many people are in the room, in the space. Okay, and that's a setting. That maximum occupancy or like yes, the yes, this would projected be max. employee or whatever? This would be max. Okay. Um, uh, because you, because it, at our level of the design, we're using it to size and sizing always goes for the maximum, right? Um, and so, and so that would be of interest. And then you also want to know when <laughs> will be the max load. Okay. And, and those can be assumptions that you're making. Um, you could, you could make the assumption that the max load will be at like the hottest hours. or coldest part of the day. Um, you know, or uh, it could be at other things. Uh, for instance, when I worked as the um, test site supervisor at WEMCO, um, there were only certain times I could turn on one or two pieces of equipment because they took such a high load that they would kick the whole company into a new uh, energy demand platform level. And if I did that, that might cost us a ten or a fifteen thousand dollar monthly demand charge. And so we had to know when we could do certain things. Um, now for us, we'll probably answer these questions. We're just going to say per the Revit model. Okay. Um, max people. How do you, do you know how to figure that out? Have you done any of that? So, I, no. <laughs> yeah, so so here's the thing. Um, without really getting into the questions that you would do with the client, you know, are there special events where everybody's going to pack in here? Um, you know, how, how will this work out? You can use the Revit standard for lobby. All right, which means that we're going to have to assign that space as a lobby. And then Revit will be able to take over from there and know how many people per square foot normally come in a lobby, what's their heat gain, what's their this, what's their that, all this kind of stuff. So we'll just use the Revit standard that's logged in, but we'll have to know to assign that space as lobby. I do enjoy that about Revit, how smart it is of a program. Yeah. Now you should know that, that there's a group called ASHRAE, which is the, the big national uh, consensus organization, sort of like ASME is for mechanical. ASHRAE yeah. is mm -hmm. for heating and ventilation people. And they don't like the Revit standard. 
<laughs> they think it's not uh, really quite good enough. But um, at this basic preliminary design level, they would accept it. And then they would say, okay, good. Uh, uh, you know, now architectural team. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've done your job. Now let the pros take over and we'll yeah. resize things. But you'll be close, you know, you'll be okay. And you won't have totally forgotten about something that we need, okay? And so then when will the max load occur? And so again, that would be, um, you know, some places um, they set their schedules so that it's, you know, more people are there at night, more people are in the day, more people are at this, more people at that. But again, I'm gonna suggest that we use the Revit standard for a lobby and uh, normal usage. Do you know another place we could get these standards from? Have you guys used eQuest oh, no. yet? Uh, I remember doing one thing. I know I've heard of that. I forget what class I did it in, but we did something. One very small thing. <laughs> yeah. So we have access to eQuest, which is more closely aligned. And uh, you could use those, but we won't. I mean, you could. Actually, if uh, if one of our students wants to go into eQuest and look up and compare those numbers to the Revit standard, you could. Okay? So that's what we need for the lobby. So now we have to look at all of the same things for electrical. And let's go back and, and look. What do we... Um, what, what do we need to know? So we need to know if there's special equipment that's going to take, you know, is there special signs or this or that or the other thing? So let's go back there and look and see. So I'm not seeing anything special, you know, but you could imagine that maybe there would be some sort of equipment in this corner here or something that that you might want to show off or have a demo area or something like that. But I'm not seeing too much special equipment. Um so, you know, maybe something for that light lamp. Da, da, da. So, so let's go back then. Oops. Over here, and um, just say that there's no special equipment. Lighting is standard for a lobby. And again, where are we going to find that? That's going to be from our Revit standard for a lobby. And I'm going to call it um, Receptacle Power Receptacle. Will be standard for a lobby. And there are some standards to go through from those. Okay, but I think we probably want um, office equipment at the front desk. What other kind of equipment can you think of that might be needed? And we're skipping data. We're not even talking about data, right? We it was like, no, don't even want to go there. 
I think I think that's probably it. And then plumbing for the lobby. Can you think of any plumbing that has to go in the lobby? I mean, I don't feel like that there would be anything there. I think the most that they would have is if they had like a water dispenser, it would be a, a jug thing that you refill. I mean, I'm just thinking like, you know. Right, so, yeah. right. And so let's put that down. Like a shared, uh, what's those things called? <laughs> The uh, Alhambra, whatever, where they change them. Yeah. <laughs> Those things. <laughs> okay. So that sounds pretty good. Um, and that's nice because that means we don't need any drain or anything like that either. And even for coffee, right? You just fill it right. up from your, from, from your thing. Okay. So that's, that's pretty cool. So now we have to do that same stuff for an office area. And let's just see. So we've got, so our circulation patterns now are a little bit different, right? If we come in here, our circulation patterns are room by room. Each, each one of these has a drop ceiling in this area. So, okay, so again, we can do the same thing. Uh, max people per square feet. Um, and this is going to be in each room okay and and we'll use the same thing of of people per square feet um and th that means that you're going to have cfm for like 1.4 people <laughs> or something like that but we'll make this for an office space except there's going to be one if you if you um, if you think about it this this group one of those rooms is going to have to be a server room you know if they're doing all of this kind of of work and and data work and things like that they're going to need a good server room right so to be kept cooler than it yeah everything else yeah it's got to be cooler and it's, it has to have a higher airflow and i've than, heard that, like they call them the cold room you know yep <laughs> like that right okay um so so this will be that will be the, the, the one of those rooms will want to be done a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that we have to go to that level in, in our little basic design, um, but, but we should have it in the back of our mind that somebody's going to need to do that, right? Yeah. Um, and then when will the max load occur? Uh, and again, so we'll just use for standard um, office space, normal usage. Okay. And of course for the electrical equipment, it's, it's essentially, you know, that's going to be either at the hottest or the coldest time that, that, that probably won't have a variation. So we can just use it as office space for, uh, when the max load will occur. Okay. So you can see this, you know, this is just a way to just make sure that you've asked all the questions, right? We went through the lobby. Uh, now we're going through th these areas. 
Um, and now there is also one other room, which is the bathroom. Okay. Um, but bathrooms generally have lower requirements than office space. Um, other than the ventilation which we're not going to do. We're just going to be doing air supply. We're not going to do return and vent and and uh, return and exhaust. And so we'll go ahead and um, um, we're just going to um, that the bathroom is the same as an office. <laughs> Okay, because we see over here, that's what this room, this one is a bathroom. Okay, so that's what that one is. Okay, so for electrical, of course... server room needs extra okay and and we don't know what that is but we'd have that b before we did a full design we would have to know again we're going to um, we're gonna let the final design do the sizing for that okay office, hallway, or um, or the server room. And we'll do the same thing here. And then, of course, um, you know, in this area, again, there's no real special equipment except for the server room, which we've put there. So we'll just leave that one kind of alone. And our plumbing is for the bathroom. Now, we'll have to figure out what exactly we we want but we want at least right a lav um toilet and do we need anything else in there so here's the question is do you about want like the floor drain like you know in case of overflow yeah. or to clean the floor type Yes. Is that so let's, something? Good? Let's do this as cold water supply, hot water supply, and drain. Now it doesn't necessarily need hot water. I mean, maybe not. Well, it, it is a requirement for washing oh, it, your okay. hands. Right. Okay. For um, public spaces, huh? But I would suspect, you know, most industrial places are now are using called point of use on demand right. hot water supply, which is basically just a cold water line. So I can, I usually say, oh, that's what it is, right? So mm -hmm. you're hot water for these. Now, the next question is, um, you know, people are going to be going out and doing service. It's environmental work. It could be icky. It could be mucky. Do you want a shower in this place? And so that's a question we would have to ask. Um, but we could certainly design in for it. So we can say, you know, I don't know if they're going to want it, but let's just see 
you know, if it makes any real effect on our line size and everything. And let's put in the capability for it. And if they want it at some future time, they can have it. So that would be a, um, a good thing to have. So that's our cold water, our drain, of course, for lav, toilet. Now, here's one of the cool things. Depending on how they make the shower, the shower drain can be the floor drain. So, okay, because a lot of places they just tile the thing up and um, basically just have a curtain and the floor drain for everything else is just the low point where you put the, the shower drain. And it's not very expensive when you do it that way. So, um, that's pretty much it. Now, um, the question is, what about drinking water? Let's go back through and see if there's even a place where it can be put. Could potentially, no, look at, look at that little corner there. This, this is really packed in. Could probably put, if this door were moved, which is part of the build-out, you could put a drinking fountain down there, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, somewhere, it would be great if they didn't have to go out into the lobby to get a drink. Uh, but there's not much other... Could, could be right down there. Could put, um, could put a drinking fountain down there. So, what do you think of that? Is that something that sounds like a possibility? Yeah, it seems like a pretty simple thing because you would just need a cold water um, line there. Right, and it wouldn't even have to be very big. Okay, so let's put... Um, Drinking fountain at end of office hallway. So that lets us know a little bit more about that. So that could be that can be good. Um, okay, so now we want one more, which is the manufacturing area. Okay, so let's go in there. Our circulation patterns there are, it's open ceiling, let's see about in here, in this bathroom, except for the bathroom. So our circulation pattern Okay, so that's not too bad. Now, would there be anything that really helps us understand how tall things need to be? That looks like it's got like a 10-foot ceiling, right? About? Do you think that there will be lifting equipment or a forklift where we have to have any areas clear for our circulation patterns. Any places where we have to be sure we do not run ducting? Uh, well, probably above each of those shelves, maybe. If they're going to store 
it's on top. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that, that's exactly right. Uh, but if they are going to get up there, then that means they're going to need a forklift or something. Um, or a lift table. So this is really a pretty low ceiling, which is why this would really be light manufacturing. Um, you know, this might need to have all of the ducting above the ceiling and penetrations come in where you have your, um, your terminals. I just look at this and I go, man, if they have anything, even, even one of those little hand cranes where you pump it by hand and it's like a cherry picker, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even that Pretty would have, space. yeah. And especially when you have lighting in here too. Mm, drops, yeah, drop lighting, yeah. Yeah. Um, or even if the, even if it's big fluorescence right up against mm, yeah. the light, uh, against the ceiling, this is a very low ceiling. It's tight space. Um, so I'm going to put in here. low ceiling not much room for ducting if we also consider lifting equipment and lighting equipment now as you go through a walkthrough the more a person knows and they're used to doing this the better it is. That's why you always want to find contractors that have done this before. Because they'll point things out that you never thought of. Right? So my goal with this is not to, you know, do the most complete walkthrough ever. But to give you the idea that somebody's going to be thinking about this stuff. Um, and so that means that ducting most likely will be on the roof. And that probably means that extra insulation on the ducting may be required, which may mean that round ducting will be required. And so that's a that can be a little bit extra cost, but you know, just because of this, you know, we want to consider this lifting equipment and lighting equipment. Um I, I think the ducting might be a problem on this one, unless we're on top. Let's see what else. We'll need um, we'll need probably we might need a little bit more airflow in this um, in this half over here. So let's what do you think what do you think the water treatment might be in here? Like some kind of filter or? Yeah, so there will be a filter, but there will also probably be chlorine. Mm -hmm. um, just to keep this clean, you know, especially if there's environmental bugs. And I mean, uh, that was a big part of my job when I worked at the treatment plant was washing everything with sulfuric acid so right. that nothing cross-contaminated. And so this is probably going to have a high smell of chlorine. Mm -hmm. Here we have hazardous waste. And over here we got chemistry stuff. Um, and so we might want to consider um, over here of having um, um, extra exhaust or 
circulation in the chemical rich area of the manufacturing space. So we might just want to overdo it a little bit over there and just make sure that we that we're thinking about that. It might even want its own unit. Um, you know, so it's going to be filtering yeah. more heavily. Right. And there might be more exhaust from that yeah. area. Um, so, you know, the, the way this would look is there would be one unit probably running the lobby area or the lobby and the um, office area. Um, and separate for this space. That's right. And there mm -hmm. might be two on the roof for this. We don't know mm -hmm. for sure yet, but we're we're starting to think about that. Now, the max people per square foot here, um, th there is, you know, you could use a standard for a light manufacturing shop or an R&D area or something like that um, uh, for, for doing the load. So I'm going to say we're going to use uh, the Revit standard for light manufacturing and I think that that will will do and we'll just use that all the way across the line um, and when will the max load occur again we can just use for light manufacturing Now we got a bunch for electrical. And just know, we are not doing the electrical unless we have time. Um, there's a bunch of extra to the electrical to do. Mm -hmm. And if we do the electrical, it will only be for the equipment panel so that you guys can see how that works. So is there a special equipment? Yes, <laughs> right? Lots of it. You know, yeah. We've got... We've got We've got, I'm going to call it a uh, small machine tools. We've got um, cleaning stations. We've got the pool, which is going to for sure have the filter and, and the chem pump. We have the fume hood. Um, what else besides, let's see, from the fume hood, we've got the autoclave. So that's, that's kind of the majority of it, right? It's got, that's got a lot of it. Um, so those would each need to be included and figured out how, to, oh, you know where else we need a floor drain? <laughs> in the oh we're not there yet we're room. not to the plumbing yet. <laughs> so I, I was looking at this oh no okay so there is a so ton like, i've been thinking about that i'm like oh wait no that's plumbing that's plumbing hold on <laughs> yeah uh and so so then we also have uh we have we have shop lighting that we have to include and then we also have we'll use standard shop floor, um, that's for your receptacles. And usually what you do, um, except for that there's this water, we're going to, we'll probably talk about doing what's called uh, drop lines. In other words, the electrical all runs along the ceiling and then at places on the ceiling, there's boxes with a cord that hangs down. And oh, yeah. And and that's where you get that from. And you can pull them up and out of the way or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're called ceiling drops or drop lines or ceil something like that. I'll, I'll put that in here, ceiling drop. Sometimes I feel like my house needs those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're not going to pay too much attention to the electrical, but 
you can see, boy. It's very basic, just... I guess, oh. lighting and whatnot is what we're really, yeah. Yeah, you know, we need something for this thing, right? Uh -huh. And there, there, there would have to be airlines and. Is that a compressor? Yeah, that's a little compressor. Hmm. Okay, because everything, every, every mill lathe, everything is going to need air to blow it clean. And you'll probably need air over here in this area. Over here, you might need air, but you're probably using um, gas tanks for, you know, argon or nitrogen or whatever you need, um, helium, whatever you need for your for your testing. Um, so, so there we go. Okay. There we go for that. But there's, yeah, there's just tons of electrical in here. And you, you may need some specific electrical around, around these shelves too. It depends on what type of, they call them pallet jacks. Uh -huh. that allow you to raise and lower stuff. You know, I would suspect that they would use power pallet jacks instead of a forklift here, but you never know. You know, it depends on, like, there's a room here to drive your pickup truck back into or a trailer and load it up. Um, is that what that space, like, that open square is? Is that this is like a roll-up door? Yeah, it's a roll-up kind of door. The, okay. You know, when you look at it from the outside. That's what I figured that was. So... Um, when you render it, it looks a little bit better, mm -hmm. but not much. Um, you know, and then there's other things like, um, if, if this is up, what are you going to do? Are you going to put those little plastic hangy things on here? Oh, the uh, flat. You know, to, to, to keep your, your air in, you know, mm -hmm. what are you going to use to keep your air from just rushing in and out there? Lots and lots of questions, but for what we're going to do at this very basic level, we'll stop there. Okay. So now we still want all of this, but now we need a couple of other things. Uh, we probably want a drinking fountain near the roll-up door. But what else do we need in here for cold water supply? Um, like a, like a cleaning thing, like, or for, you know, spills. Yep. Yeah. You need an emergency shower. Um, and an it, eye yeah. Wash like for, for your sure. eye wash. Yeah. So we need, um, okay. Usually they're, um, certainly for the, the, power cleaner uh, each mill is usually has um, you know something where you can quickly wash down a floor mm -hmm. so the power cleaner the machine tools uh, the fume hood will need deionized water so we probably need or um, you know some other type of water but you know there will be some piece of equipment that will run that uh, the autoclave uh, the pool the the test pool will depth so there's going to be a fairly high cold water supply need yeah, as well one. as for the toilet, right? Yep. And, and that. Um, so that's not just that. That's not the bathroom. Well, let's see. <laughs> There we go. That should do it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and then drain comes out one more here. There we go. Now I've got a little bit better. So so that's the essence of a walkthrough. 
It's your way of figuring out what's needed and by actually being in there and being, oh, oh, look at there, here's some other lighting, right? There were some very specific um, uh, um, these kind of bolster lights, um, Ballard lights that are, that are put in place here. And so somebody had that idea that there would be some Ballard lights just to, to give a little bit of light of this. And you can imagine what happens if, you know, a service team comes back, it's dark, they hit that roll-up door, it's hard to find the main lights, all that kind of stuff. So that was the idea of having some of these lights in here, I think, by the, by the person who was doing the main design. So there'd just be something that somebody could get their bearings. So um, for lighting, there would be uh, and there would be bollards for For when it's dark. Okay, so that that's what I'm interested in, and in you guys knowing about a walkthrough. I'm gonna stop the recording.